What does it mean to be a fan who sits in those bleachers and interacts with the team? What does it mean to, in that role? And what does the team mean to you or what is it represented to you? So Don graciously agreed, nervously agreed, to share tonight. So would you welcome one of your own and one of our great, many great fans who's going to share tonight in, in representation of you, Don Hudson. I don't know how I can follow given the key to the city. I mean, how, how do you follow that? Um, I appreciate this opportunity to share with you how much this team and the IW basketball organization means to me and our family. I'm honored to have the opportunity to share how the team has impacted my life over the last six or so years. First, we became fans. My wife, Dana, has worked in the post office here at Indiana Wesleyan for 16 years. She just retired last May. Um, she loved mingling with the students, and a lot of the players would come up and ask her to go to the games. I love basketball, so here we go. We start watching the games. And then uh, one year, a student needed a place to stay for a summer. And Dana asked to me, she, or says to me, she says, I, I think we need to talk. So uh, he said, this kid needs a place to stay. He doesn't have any place to go. So we opened our house, and he stayed with us that summer. Well, during that summer, Stephen Gidley was uh, director of basketball operations. And he introduced us to the players, the coaches, the coaches' wives, and the great fans at Indiana Wesleyan. The more we learned about this program, the bigger fans we became. It says, by, by the way, uh, we call Stephen son now. And uh, Stephen calls my wife mom, calls me pop. My daughter, and, oh, sorry. My daughter and my son are sitting there. He calls them sis and brother, and they call him brother. And I'm sure she can't say it right now, but she's 16 month old granddaughter is going to call him Uncle Steve. I guess what I'm trying to say is he's family. A couple years later, uh, a graduate of Indiana Wesleyan, a ball player, uh, became my insurance agent. I told him uh, if he worked half as hard for me as he did on the basketball court, we would be fine. Taylor Schoen is still my agent today. Okay, now on to this year's team. Some of these guys like to eat. <laughs> uh, we built some relationships eating and telling stories at a little restaurant in Converse, Indiana. Said so the first question I would always ask everyone is, how on earth did you end up playing basketball in Marion, Indiana? Each player always answered the same. Said so once we meet the players and the coaching staff, this is home. I think that ought to tell us something about this program. This is just some of the discussions that we had. Um, there's one story that Johnny told, and I'm not going to tell it, but it was just hilarious. <laughs> okay, this group of young men make up a great team of prayer warriors. So my wife, Dane, has been in the hospital since January the 3rd. After multiple tests and procedures, Dane has been diagnosed with HLH and histoplasmosis. Both are life-threatening diseases. Stephen contacted the coaching staff, and they all contacted me and told me that we'll get through this. We've got your back, and the whole team are praying for you guys. But this just wasn't good enough for this squad. Lindsay Middlesworth handmade a blanket, and the team all laid hands on it, prayed over it, and sent it to the hospital for Dana along with a card signed by the whole team, including the coaches. This act picked her up emotionally so much. Unbelievable. So now all the doctors and the nurses know about the story of the blanket. They know where it all came from. It doesn't stop there. Aaron and Bria Murray stopped by to see Dana around Valentine's Day. They just uh, happened to be in the neighborhood, they said. I said, every time I saw a player or talked to a coach, they would say, hey, we're praying for you and Dana. We have your back. It's hard not going to Branson this, this year. It would have made our sixth year in a row. 
but we did watch every game in the hospital on an iPad in Dana's room, and I thought I was going to get thrown out of the ICU room. <laughs> As part of the IU Nation, uh, we're so thankful for Keith and General Rohrbach. Uh, they brought us t-shirts from the championship from Branson along with the piece of the net. Uh, I appreciate Tony putting his devotions on uh, Twitter all the time. It seemed like it hit me in the head every day at the hospital or at work. I appreciate that, Tony. Um, I recently saw a video with Coach Clark on the Restoration Road. He was so inspiring. He talked about the I Am Third motto. He was so, so passionate about how this program works. He now has me trying to memorize Philippians 2, 1 through 11. His five-year-old son can do it, so hopefully I can in a few months. <laughs> Dana's on the road to recovery now, and it's all because of the power of prayer and the faithfulness of prayer warriors such as this team and staff. To God we give all the glory. There's no words that can express the gratitude I have for these players, coaches, and families who prayed and supported us in the scariest time of our lives. I thank you for praying and loving our family through this journey. Coach DeMichael, you asked me if my life has been influenced by this team. You bet it has. Started with another son and daughter-in-law now, an insurance agent, and last but not least, a great group of prayer warriors. Oh, and I almost forgot. This team plays a pretty good game of fearless basketball. It's pretty awesome that the national champions are allowing me to tell you how much I appreciate them on and off the court. I'm proud to be a part of the Wildcat Nation. Thank you all for teaching me the way to live. I am through. Thank you.